Hi everybody, Bible Pop with Carol and B, and today is March 17th, 2022, and I'm here with a message, another message from Ezra, you know, like the message I gave you last time I talked, and the lesson is in Ezra, and we, first of all, last time we talked about how Babylonia had captured Israel, and 70 years later, Babylon uh, was, uh, not 70 years later, but Babylon was captured by Persia, was overtaken by Persia. And now the Persians are, are allowing the Israelites to go home and rebuild the Temple of God. And my purpose on being here today is to let you guys know that even though these kings in Persia, Darius and Osiris, order that the kings of the other provinces around Israel would help Israel rebuild the temple with any monetary money, monies they needed or supplies or any of the animals for the sacrifices. King Darius ordered them to help them and do it speedily. I came on to tell you that it, the, the reason, well, you guys, excuse me. It, it's so profound to me. I'm the reason that I'm on here today is to let you know that king, the kings of Persia and Cyrus and all the other ones that King Darius told to help the Israelites rebuild the temple didn't even worship God. They didn't even. Love the Lord like the Israelites did. Yet they wanted the Israelites to rebuild the temple. Guess what, y'all? That's because God in the world helps the whole world. The little amount of people who serve the Lord helps the whole world. This is why I'm here today to tell you that. And you who are in the church make a difference to the whole world. Collectively, we reach the whole world. You, you can't not understand that if you read Ezra, the book of Ezra. You can't not see that people that don't even want God to live the life for God need God. This, this is a lesson to all of us. And what's going on in the world today, in our country, in America here today, is because We've kicked God out of the country. Remember, America was a world power. China had nothing not, not to say to us. Singapore, uh, uh, not Singapore, uh, North Korea, you know, Kim Jong-un. Vladimir Putin's Russia couldn't touch us. But these days, I don't know. But there was a time when America, when it was built around the, the, the word of God, we were a world power. The air, all the rest of the nations in the world looked up to us. They don't look up to us anymore. They play us like we idiots over here. That's because we've erased God from what we do every day, our everyday life. No more church, no more prayers in school. Homosexuality has been, uh, same-sex marriage has been legalized. I mean, things like that. Uh, this is ridiculous, people. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is that you make a difference. Even though you don't think you can make a difference in God, in the spirit, you make a difference. Even I make a difference. Everybody, people was thinking I don't make a difference. I was just, just less than, probably because they wanted to feel that way, but some really believed it. But now I'm showing you, I'm, I'm, today, every day God raises me up. Every day God gives me a, a prize of the, the high calling of, of him through Christ Jesus every single day. And that's in Philippians 3 and 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, every day that I stick with this, every day I get a prize. Every single morning I wake up, y'all. God has done a new thing in my life toward my betterment, toward my peace from these demonic behaviors and spirits that are coming against me every single day in my life. You know, God is changing all that. And I, I praise his name. You know, 
The prize is not just that death and when we get our crown and that. We get a prize every single day in Christ Jesus. But I got to, even in your wilderness, you get a prize because it's that day closer to getting out of the wilderness. I have to say, people, that I can understand. I do understand why people do not want to serve the Lord. I do understand that. But I don't understand why you don't. Anyway, because whether you like it or not, God made you, God made you for his own glory. And it, the, uh, there's a punishment attached to not serving the Lord in your lifetime, and that's hell. So go ahead and serve him, because first of all, you'll be better off for it. You'll feel better. Your life is better. You bless others. You you go. That might not be the best thing to say because people are so selfish. But just by God being in your life blesses other lives. You know what I mean? So I don't know. There's a prize every day for being in the in God. And even if these people way back in the day knew that God in the world was better for them and they didn't even want to serve God. But they knew that God being in the world, they wanted the Israelites to go back and build their temple. Because their God, that central location was the strength of that region. That's because God was in it. America was the strength of the world because God was in her. We have got to get God back in us, in this country, in our lives, in our children's lives, especially in the men because they've broken each other down to their, where they're just, you know, be practicing that homosexuality and just being outright. No, of no value to the women and children. I mean, where where would you be without the women and all men of every race? Where where would your heritage come be if you didn't have your children? And the devil got y'all all thinking you don't need women. Uh, 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 how that's that's the devil right there when you when you can think it, when that's a a a, a, a thought in your head that could be a possibility. That's Satan right there. Because when you don't need women, how are you going to make babies? When did God tell you homosexuality was the way to go? As a matter of fact, don't God say the opposite, that it's an abomination to him? What are you talking about? What? How has the devil turned your mind so that you could possibly believe that that's okay? How, that That is, you know, something to think about, people. And that's why America is falling. I don't want to fall prey to Russia or China or North Korea or any other country. We were a world power and now we're weak. We don't we don't look out on the horizon for new threats or opportunities. We don't do anything but degrade each other and turn upon ourselves in America. We are in a, a critical state. And if we don't get God back in our lives, remember Second Chronicles, uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. How much simpler can what I'm trying to get across to you guys be? In that at Second Chronicles. Come on, people. We have got to pull it together. I know this is a short. It's meant to be a short. I'm not here to say, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you the truth. I sat here for 30 minutes, 31 minutes in a video saying this stuff to you. Then the phone rang and I paused the video. And then I stopped the video trying to unpause it. 30 whole, 31 whole minutes and 42 seconds. I just erased it and just started this one. And now it's just going to be like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. But there's not much to say to you other than you make a difference. God in your life makes a difference in the world. Go back to God. And I feel like a lot of times people that leave God or 
go to church and don't really ain't is not really practicing the Lord in their lives is because of the wilderness people. Everybody gonna have one when you turn to the Lord. Every you can extend your wilderness period for decades. Which people have done that in the church, all because they won't go through with it. You're gonna go through. Well, you know what? Once I'm telling you, once God created you and you was born on the earth, you're gonna do what a certain thing that was planned for your life. And you might this. This is what I've done. I might as when I gave my life to Christ, this is what I said before I gave it. I said, I'm gonna go ahead and try this thing with Christ and, and go through all the hard times that come upon me. I'm gonna go ahead and do this thing. And guess who made me stick to that? It wasn't me, it was God. That God God heard that. Because that's you know what? He wasn't uh, bothered if that's not what he had wanted in the first place. He put the thought in my head, I know that now. To go ahead and go to the wilderness because uh, uh, life I was living was headed was not headed nowhere. It had gone nowhere. And I hit a brick wall. There was nothing else I wanted to, to experience or try that was worldly. Nothing. <laughs> y'all, y'all hear me? So I, I put on the Lord and just, I tried that years ago when I, in, in my youth, in my 20s. But I abandoned it because it was too much for me, too hard. Now that I got back to it and resumed it, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me in all my born days. I'm in my seventh year, you know, like the at the point I gave my life to Christ in August of 2015, all that up until August of 2016 was my first year. So up until 2017, that was my second year. So now I'm in my seventh year, and in August of 2022, I'll be in my eighth year. I have nothing but hell. The whole time. Y'all know all about it. You helped the hell. You helped. Some of y'all helped that hell. It was literal hell. H E double hockey sticks. But God was just trying to show y'all that if I can go through hell, you can do, you can go through your wilderness too. And I don't appreciate having to go through hell. To show the next person that they can make it to wilderness. But I did it. And thank God for that. Hallelujah. You can do it. I want you to do it. Just bear down and go through that wilderness. Because you, when you abandon it, you're going to... It's no good. You're going to keep coming back and back. And people have been in church for decades. Trying to get through the wilderness. You'll never get through it until you submit yourself to God. Go away to pride. Stop trying to be something. To stop being ritual, doing ritual by going to church. That's not getting you in heaven. You got preachers that's not getting to heaven because they preaching a lie, living a lie, and preaching the word of God. Prostituting some are the word of God. Living lies through the word of God. Twisting the words of God around to suit the devil. And you think it's suiting you, but it's suiting Satan because they, they are owned by Satan. All right. Things like that going on. But I'm telling you, if you're going through a wilderness, go on, go on, go on through it, go on. Keep on saying it'll be over sooner or later. This can't last forever. And, and it seemed like God just forgot me. And just, he, oh. Y'all, it's like, God, where are you? How could you possibly, why would you do this? Why is this happening? It was devastating in my soul. Give it. But you got to go. Guess what? I'm out of here. I'm past my wilderness. I didn't. I thought I was. But it took other preachers and ministers to let me know. And these are all ministers on YouTube and stuff. I don't necessarily go to church because I'm not like there. I'm not, you know, I'm not welcome. My gift is not appreciated. So I don't really go right now. But I'm going to go back to church because I miss it. You know, I'm going back to church. So. Like me or not, I'm done. Here I go. I'm coming back to church for whatever. You know, you don't have to like me. And you don't have to pay me any attention either. Because I'm there to serve the Lord. Why aren't you? You know, don't pay me any attention. But God confirmed that I was out of my wilderness through other people. Preaching a word they don't know who they preaching to. And maybe they do, but you know, like, 
They don't know me personally. They know that I'm out of the wilderness. And that was confirmed by them. God told me, and it takes other people. It, people make a difference. You make a difference. They make a difference. I make a difference. Everybody makes a difference. And certainly God in the center of a country makes the biggest difference. Am I correct, y'all? All right. So I, my advice to those going through that wilderness, no. It, it's not going to be forever. And believe that, understand this one thing, that God knows how long they have you there. So if you're there for a long time, then God knows you need it. And the longer you're in your wilderness, the more God is going to be doing with you. So I'm glad that I'm out of the wilderness. And I'm glad I ain't have to be in there for 10 years. You know, in my seventh year, I just got out of the wilderness. But I thank God because I'm out. I don't think, I thank God for the wilderness too because I'm out. I can thank God. I can look back and say thank you. But while I was in, I'm like, oh, Lord, 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 Lord. I, I don't know. I don't understand you. I, I'm, I don't really like you no more, guys. Look at God. Look at, man, I didn't say that to God. But that's how I was really talking. What I was saying to God in the words, I was using like, God, I, 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 I don't like this. I didn't say that. I don't like this. And I can't stand this. I, I don't want to go through this anymore. I was saying, God, I don't like what you're doing. You know, that's what I was saying. I don't like this. I don't like, I don't appreciate this. I didn't. And you probably saying it too. But he's not hearing it that way. He's hearing it, your misery. He, he loves you. He's feeling. Jesus Christ is feeling your misery and telling it to God. Believe that. And it may look like there's no reason you should be going through this, but it is. It, it, there's a reason. There's no reason for all those demons on top of me, all on top of me, on top of me, on top of me like they were. It was purpose for that because maybe I rebuke demons in the name of Jesus and, and, and save people, heal people, you know. Well, uh, thank you, Jesus. So you, your wilderness is your purpose. Is your purpose is in your wilderness, rather. Your purpose is in it. So I don't know my purpose all the way yet, but whatever. I'm glad I'm out the wilderness. Ooh. And I want you to feel the who. But first of all, I want you to give your life to Christ so that you can. Feel that who, because that's another who off of your soul when you give, oh my God. When you give your life to Christ, honey, it's like a weight off your life, off your shoulders, off your head, off your chest. And Jesus will help you through any wilderness. I, I shouldn't have said that first. But I should have asked, asked you to offer your life to Jesus. And so I made a mistake, God, and I pray that that does not hinder the word. And, and the effects of your word, God. Because your word will trump wildernesses. It trumps evil. It trumps pain. It trumps lack. God, your word trumps. In the name of Jesus, y'all, I would not lie. So I'm asking you to give your life to Christ today. So you can begin to help the world. Centralize God. And help the rest of the world. You think President Biden ain't thinking about you? He's not going to think about you. Unless the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord touched that man. And the Spirit of the Lord is all but left America. Put it back, y'all. My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That is in Second Chronicles. That's what God said. Now listen. Give your life to Christ this day, this moment, and tell God that you need him in your life. Get that first big woo, and all the other who's will work themselves out in the Lord. Trust me, and you know I'm not hustling, guy. I'm not, you know, like prostituting the word of the Lord to get something. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting. You see that? I ain't nobody ever said nothing there ever. The only money that I ever went through that account was something I was sending somebody else. But anyway, the Lord loves you. You ought. To Every man ought to give his life to the Lord. Now that that let that be my quote. Every man ought to serve the Lord. And won't you serve him today? Won't you just make a commitment that you want to serve him? Because you will not be able to serve him or anything until he puts that in your spirit. All you're gonna do today is get the biggest relief of your life and make the angels shout for joy. Because the angels are happy over one sinner that repents. The 99,000 people who won't repent. 
the angels have you over one person that repents, y'all. And I mean, how? But you and you'll feel those angels. Let me God, let them feel the angels when they say this prayer with us. And I'll say this prayer with me, people. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus Christ into this world to save people from their sins. God, to save us, Jesus had to suffer and die, but you raised him from the death. And I'm asking you right now, God, to save us. Save me. Save me, Lord God. Through Christ Jesus, who did suffer to save me. God, thank you for the blessed day. Amen. Now, if you say that prayer, guess, 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 I hear you, I feel you, I feel the spirit, glory, hallelujah, I fat as you, Father God, praise your holy name, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, God, hallelujah, you hear those angels, y'all, do you feel that feeling, those are the angels rejoicing, go ahead, those are angels rejoicing, because they're happy of the one person or two or three, who is, is repentant of that that they need Christ Jesus. He, they're happy. They, I know you felt it because I felt it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And now I have to go. But what I want to say to the newly saved is read your Bibles, pick it up, and always, always give God thanks every day for the life He has given to you through Christ Jesus. What Jesus died, suffered and died for is more than just the salvation you just received. It's a lifestyle, a lifetime of love, prosperity, divine joy that you can't get off this earth. And I might add happiness. God has made me happy. I didn't think I could be happy in the Lord because there was happiness when I wasn't in the Lord. But I'm happy, being happy in the Lord, happiness outside the Lord, it has no comparison. Believe me, I'm happy. You'll be happy. And God will bless you. And so now, I'm going to sign off. But remember, remember Ezra. Remember that the kings of Persia and, and the surrounding areas wanted the Israelites to build their temple back. Like they wanted to do. And serve their God. Because God in the world is better than God not in the world. And in the tribulation after Jesus collects his people and it's gone and the tribulation starts. The spirit of God won't be nowhere in the world. It's still in the world right now. And if the world is like this with the spirit of God still in it, imagine the tribulation when God's spirit won't be in the world. So you don't want to go through the tribulation. You want to go home when Jesus comes. Excuse me, y'all, because this happens every time I'm busy. So in the name of Jesus, I thank God for you. I thank God that we had this time together. I thank God that you got saved. I thank God that he answered my prayer to that you would feel those angels. I thank God that you guys are listening and look, people, put God back in your life because you collectively can make a better America, stronger America, and we wouldn't have to fear the rest of the world like we're doing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I love you guys. Have a great day. God bless you. Adios.